Hello and welcome back. It is now May 26th. It is a beautiful Monday morning out here. A little bit of a breeze. We've got some pretty hot weather in the forecast this week. I think almost every day this week we're supposed to be down near 30 degrees and 10 degrees overnight. So a pretty big change compared to last week where we were talking about how it was too cold for herbicides. Now we're going to have to start dealing with it being too warm for herbicides. So watch those delta T values. It's not just raw temperature alone, it's also humidity that is going to affect when it is safe to spray. So let's take a look and see what's going on in the fields today. Well, this barley got herbicide a couple days ago at the four leaf stage. It is just starting to hit stem extension now. When you slice a stem open and you look inside here, you can just barely see. We got right where my thumb is, that's where like the crown node is basically. And then we got about a centimeter space. We got the next node right there and then the developing head is just above that so these nodes are starting to move things are going to start to happen pretty soon now well after all that moisture last week we got some pretty nice dry land canola stands coming up you can look down these rows things are looking pretty good there's the odd gap in the pattern here and there where we have you know heavy straw that was kind of slowing things down but uh, overall i'd say you know pretty good first ones up are now hitting one and two leaf stage are looking pretty good a lot are still in cotyledon stage but they are coming well most of the wheat in my small plots is hitting the three to four leaf stage so we will definitely be coming back here doing our applications later on this week once i have all my trial product in place a couple of these companies have been a little slow getting me their trial product so hopefully they're all here in time well, we got quite the storm that's developed out there to the east. Apparently this is just going through the Picture Butte area right now. There's a severe storm warning for a large dangerous hail. So interesting to see. There's quite a good stiff wind at the moment coming out of the southwest, which would be directly behind me, feeding straight into this storm. So that's driving off all of our humidity from the heat today, driving it straight into that storm, feeding it. Well, here we have some gopher damage going on in a canola field, so this little guy is busy eating away. So, of course, this canola is still pretty small. It's difficult to see, but we basically have a ring of about, you know, 12 to 15 feet around this set of holes where there's basically almost no canola left already. And as these gopher pups get bigger and more adventurous and move farther away from the den, that is going to expand, and we're going to end up with quite a patch, even just from this one single den here. So keep your eyes open for gophers. It's a little late to be baiting and poisoning them now, but trapping and shooting will still cut them down at this time of the year. Well, there's been a whole lot of herbicide sprayed in the last day or two. I think some fields that got sprayed yesterday were definitely outside of uh, appropriate timing. I saw quite a few sprayers going when it was 31, 32 degrees in the middle of the afternoon. So hopefully we don't see too much of that for the rest of the week. It is now a beautiful afternoon with lower temperatures. We're like 23 degrees here now. Uh, just checking a barley field that got sprayed yesterday, or it was checked off as done yesterday, I should say. And you can see we got some activity going on in here. You can see this is around the edge of the field where we got some larger kochia. And you can see some of these guys, you know, six inches tall, starting to go down and curl up a little bit. So at this size, we probably won't get 100% control on them, but hopefully we will keep them burned down until things like this barley can take over and cover over the rows. This time of the year we also need to keep an eye out for any sort of foliar disease. In this barley we usually get you know things like spot blotch, net blotch, or scald in barley at this stage it starts to really show up quickly but uh, so far this year things have been pretty clean. I have seen basically almost no disease activity. There's a little bit of spot blotch here and there but it's pretty few and far between. Well, this old pivot certainly is not having a very good day. I don't know what happened here, but uh, at some point this first span has apparently buckled and collapsed, so not nice to see. And of course, it happens in the first week of really hot weather when we can actually really use the irrigation. This field of peas is advancing really nice, so we are now out of herbicide staging on these guys, and things are looking pretty good. We, as you can see, we have some excellent nodulation going on down here on the roots. Got piles and piles of healthy little pink nodules, so things are looking really good here. This was inoculated with the, the Verdesian GX2 granular inoculant. Well, it sure didn't take long for all of last week's moisture to run out in this dry land winter wheat in this corner here. So you can really see by the silvery appearance of it, as well as those rolled up spiky leaves, it is very heavily stressed and will not amount to a whole lot. 
Meanwhile, the irrigated winter wheat is looking absolutely phenomenal. Most fields seem to be hitting the flag leaf stage right now. Things are looking really good. There's a little bit of wheat mosaic here and there, as well as powdery mildew. Let's see if I can get lucky, find any here. Uh, I don't see any in this spot, but I have found a few other spots looking in this field. But uh, now would be a good time to come in with a fungicide. Uh, I'm, I'm usually a pretty big fan of Syngenta portfolio fungicides. So at this stage, Miravis Neo, pretty easy decision for flag leaf timing, protect from leaf disease, keep your crop nice and healthy. And you could always add something in like Syngenta's Yield On as well. Or in this case, we're going to be using some super crop from Nature's Aid because we've seen really good results with that for the last few years. Here's a good weed to showcase this week. This one here is goat's beard, or if you're an American, you probably call it like yellow salsify or something like that. Kind of uh, looks like a grass at first glance, but the leaves are kind of a dead giveaway. It doesn't really grow like a general grass. It kind of forms this big rosette like this, and it's going to send up a flower stalk with a big flower, and it's somewhat like a dandelion. If you pull it up, this one's probably going to break off, but yeah. It does have a tap root, very much like a dandelion, and as you can see, it is also full of a sticky white latex, just like a dandelion would be. Now the conditions are warming up. We're actually getting some pretty good flushes of red root pigweed, so that's what these little guys are here. They look somewhat similar to the lamb's quarters, but not quite the same. Lamb's quarters has that more mealy of an appearance, whereas the red root pigweed is a little more smooth, and you can kind of see the, the veins and the leaves a little bit better. Also, you see that purple on the underside of those cotyledons or leaves is pretty distinctive as well as those red stems. Well, today I'm back at my favorite patch of determined wild oats down by Welling. And as you can see, this patch is now off color. So these were resprayed right after I was here last week. And uh, yeah, we used 20 acre case rate of Select Plus. Things are looking a little bit better now. So now when you start to pull out that newest leaf or the center leaf, it is kind of pinched off and browned off at the end. So that means the growing point has basically been damaged and is dying. So that is nice to see. So hopefully we will get control on this patch after all. Here along the edge of this field is a weed I always get asked about every year. This is morning glory. So it does kind of superficially look a little bit like a buckwheat. It's got the same kind of shaped leaves. Uh, it is very twining, it'll climb up in a crop, but it's very visually distinctive once it flowers. Of course, buckwheat does not have a flower like this. It, it, it's actually quite showy, not a bad looking little flower, but it, it can be a serious weed when it's really thick in the field, but typically that's not very common. Here we have a very interesting field of winter wheat. This is a new variety of winter wheat. I can't remember what the name is off the top of my head now that I'm out in the field, but things are looking uh, a little strange in here, you'll notice. You can still see rows, even though we're at head timing. Very nice thick crop, but very short. It is not even knee high. So today I'm going to do some tissue tests. I'm going to take some leaves. I'm going to take about 50 sets of leaves here. Take them into town to Down to Earth Labs. See if I can get a tissue test. Make sure we don't have any nutrient problems. I think for the main reason why it is so short is we were very stressed earlier in the season because we were pretty dry here. We didn't get irrigation water early enough in the season. Well, we are now at herbicide timing for the small plots, so time to get her done. So I'm out here Friday morning. I got 48 small plots to spray, so let's take a look at what I'm doing today. So here's most of the products I'll be spraying this morning. I'm still just missing one, but uh, anyways, Agrarius. This is a Canadian product out of Ontario, very highly concentrated. A little pouch does 50 acres. Super Crop, which is my favorite Alberta made product. And uh, yeah, it's been on the market for years. Been a solid, consistent performer in the trials. Taurus, active build. So Taurus is the fertilizer company and I can't wait to see how this stuff works. It should be great. Uh, I also have strong terra system. We're doing Iron Man and Zinc at herbicide timing. From Syngenta, we have Megafol, which is a promising new product. From New Farm, we have ProLiant, which is a straight gibberellic, no fertilizer in there at all. ATP Relief, which is kind of the, uh, I would say, the retail standard uh, recommendation for herbicide timing. 
uh, from Corteva Stoller, we have Sugar Mover, which is a new product for this year. Very excited to see how this one does too. And from Alpine, we have the F18 Max, which is a, a really good competitive product, I think, to the ATP Relief. I'd like to see a little bit more of this out in the field, see how that works. There is a few other products that uh, will be going on at Flag Leaf Timing that it's going to be a different system than this, but it's going to be going on the same plots. And uh, what you don't see here is the Humaterra and the Ficoterra, which has already been done at uh, pre-burn timing. And just like last year, I'll be using my cordless electric Einhell sprayer here. This one I have modified so that it actually takes a uh, Agro Plus water bottle, which I have partially filled the bottom of with epoxy. So it uh, is only able to be filled up to 400 mils, which is how much water volume I use on every plot. And then I measure out my active ingredient using a little syringe. So some of the amounts that I have to use are pretty small. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to add in an everything plot at the end. So this is just going to be a single plot, non-replicated. So, well, yes, it'll be replicated twice. So this is the full dosage of everything for herbicide timing, all in one jar. So you can see by the time we get all those humic acids in there, she gets pretty dark. So we are uh, seriously overdosed on growth hormones and fertilizers in here. So it'll be interesting to see what it does to the crop. And I just finished spraying my second set of plots and I've already gotten the bad news from a few miles south that sprayer operator has completely wiped out my first set of plots that I just finished spraying about two hours ago. So now I'm going to head down there and see if I can salvage anything. Well, it doesn't look too catastrophic so far. I got a bunch of broken stakes here with uh, various remnants. It looks like these ones have been mixed up, so I need to make sure I got the right numbered stakes in the right positions because the sprayer operator tried to fix what he had done. So uh, the tops are broken off of a bunch, so I need to renumber everything, make sure everything is good to go and uh, yeah hopefully everything is still in place there we go all fixed up remeasured everything made sure everything was in place replaced a bunch of too badly broken stakes and made sure all the numbers were in the right orders and we're off to the races I was pretty worried there for a while because while most of these in crop products I just sprayed a couple hours ago I could just measure out a new set of plots and do them but the two plots I could not replace would be Phycoterra and Humaterra, which were pre-burn products. And I would have been pretty upset to have lost the data off of those plots. But all in all, no big loss. Everything here is back to normal. Just some stakes are shorter than others.